everyone, welcome to this video. I am Baba Chide Ojo, and today on Grad School Champs, we have Timitope Benson, who is pursuing his PhD in mathematics at um, Oklahoma State University. So today, Timitope will be talking to us about um, admission, funding, and um, advice on how to survive in grad school, especially as it relates to um, the mathematics program. So welcome to this video, Timmy Tokwe. And thank you so much for taking this opportunity to share your experience with us. Yeah, it's really a pleasure, actually. That's good. So um, why not let us start by you introducing your professional background just briefly by starting with your um, undergraduate degree and how you transitioned into a master's program. Okay, so I'll make it very, very brief. So uh, I had my undergraduate in the University of Ibadan, where I studied mathematics in Nigeria. So I was privileged to finish with the first class. It's, awesome. it's a privilege. So then after the NY service, NYC service, so I came back for another, for a master's, another program in my department. So you did a master's in mathematics also yeah. in Ibadan, Nigeria. Okay. So I came back for, so, and this, this master's program was where yeah, I made up my mind that I'm not going to do any other program in Nigeria anymore because of the experiences and challenges and everything that I went through. So as a result of that, I applied to a lot of places. Okay. South Africa, I applied to Europe, I applied to Canada, I applied to US. Wow. This was the last place I applied to. U.S. was the last place you applied to. <laughs> U.S. was the last place I applied to. Okay. So, so what was the admission process like for U.S.? So, for U.S., the admission process for U.S. was pretty straightforward. I would say straightforward to me. Once you are determined. Okay. So, for any program in mathematics, whether the master's or the PhD, once you are coming from outside the US, most especially, you need the GRE. You have to write the general GRE. The general GRE, okay. Yeah, some school will waive the TOEFL that because you are coming from Nigeria, mm -hmm. school will not waive the TOEFL. You have to write the general GRE and write the general TOEFL. Okay. And some other school will also want you to write the GRE mathematics also. Oh, wow. Well, that is most especially the top school. When you want to go to a very top school, yeah, you have to go three, and you have to get a very good score. And mm -hmm. see, all that does not determine that you get the admission. Yeah, I can understand, of course. But what helped my transition to, to gain admission was uh, I met some guys. Some of my colleagues were already ahead of me also. So okay. they've gone through that challenge also. So from reference, so we're able to, because they have done well in their school. Okay. So I was able also to apply to their school. So there was a guy in statistics in Bowling Green State University. So I applied to Bowling Green then. Bowling Green State University. Where yeah. is that? Ohio. Ohio. Okay. So I applied to that. I gained the admission. I applied to Montana State also. I gained the admission with funding. Okay. So, but I choose to go to Montana State. Montana. So, I went to Montana State University for another master's. Because to get a PhD, to get admission to PhD straight, you should have a master's already. Mm -hmm. for, the, for most of the programs, because they are being skeptical about your background or background how you will be able to cope in the in the program so would you say 
um, for anyone trying to come into a mathematics PhD program, it's probably advisable to start with a master's instead of applying directly to a PhD. So, so this is the way this is the way I've seen it based on experience so far in the US. Mm-hmm. If you fin- what I do advise people now is once you finish your undergraduate, yeah. yeah, don't even bother to say you want to apply for masters in Nigeria if you know that you want to come to the United States. Okay. If, you, if you do a master's in Nigeria, it is still going to give you an edge, but you don't need it because by the time you come here, you still do another master's again. Because even if you gain admission, because some schools will give you admission from bachelor's to PhD, like University of Alabama at Birmingham, we give you PhD direct from bachelor's to PhD. But you still start your bachelor's degree program from master's level. Yeah, I bachelor's degree, your PhD. You you still have to do all the all the master's. Mm-hmm. You have to still do all the master's requirements before you now move to PhD requirements. So that's just okay. So when it when it comes to I know you got funding at Montana State. So when it comes to funding, is it like um, automatic or you do you have to apply separately for that? Okay. So so for Montana State, the funding comes. The admission. So as long as you are admitted, you are going to be given funding. Not necessarily. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily. But once your application is good enough, you have good recommendation, good reference letter, and your know, and your GRE, TOEFL, and everything is intact. So you can be assured seventy percent. At least and what, it's competitive for yeah because it's competitive. So uh, most of the time they want to consider people that are near. They want to consider in-state students first. Yeah, of course. Out of state because they spend less on in-state than out of state. Of state students. So they want to do that. So that is what's that about Montana State? So um, it's not that you have to contact a professor before you come in. Just make sure you fulfill your very solid with your requirements. If you feel your solid requirement and reach out. You can reach out also. But that, that does not say they are going to tell you that they are going to give you the funding or something. Yeah, but it's always good to reach out before always you reach out. Yeah. It's always good. Out. So now you are pursuing your PhD in mathematics and I think applied mathematics, right? Yeah. So is there any difference in requirements for admission or funding? Okay, so I moved from Montana State to Oklahoma State. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, and I um, mean applied math program. So the same requirements still hold true. Okay. But because like an Oklahoma State math is very tough. <laughs> but so it's very tough. So I would say they will not accept any student. From bachelor's to PhD direct. Ah, okay. So you have to do masters. But I am not coming for PhD now. So then they were like skeptical, like, okay, we don't know this guy, this is this. Like, okay, they've not really accepted in Nigeria into the math program. Before, before now. Oh. So you are like the first Nigerian in the math I'm program. Second, sort of. Second, okay. Yeah. The first person left. I know you oh. know the- Okay. So the first person left when he got the PhD offer somewhere, somewhere else. It was for masters, and so he left. So it is very tough. So you just have to fulfill the requirement. And I think they is once they give you the admission, you get the funding. That is most math departments, and it is not necessarily research. Yeah, like because teaching. teaching as- yeah, because you have to teach. Because, like, when I got to Montana, then I started teaching even before I started my own personal lecture classes. Mm-hmm. So, like, almost all the school take mathematics, so they need people to teach. 
So you teach. So if you are lucky, then afterward you get research funding, research assistantship. Okay. But the main assistantship is teaching assistantship, which is all of the scholarship that you pay your school fee, then they give you a token per month that you use in taking care of yourself. Oh, that's that's good to know. Um, that means, I mean, if you are going to be teaching, I mean, you really have to be good at, <laughs> at well, uh, mathematics. You, it is not the problem. Is not the teaching. <laughs> that's the that's the main problem. But you you have you face a lot of challenges. Also, like okay, your accent, your, your accent, okay, pronunciation, moving from British English to American English. Yeah, and students don't understand what you are saying. So it's, it goes a long way also in your teaching and teaching evaluation because all those things count a lot. And you, you have to really do well on your evaluation to, you have to do well on your continue evaluation. to hold the teaching assistantship. Well, uh, everything is challenging, but I'm sure it's not impossible to do. Now, um, sort of the last question that I have. Uh, I've always wondered, as a biomedical you know, scientist, I wonder what you guys do for research. <laughs> what is research like in mathematics, especially for a PhD student? <laughs> okay, so research, research in mathematics is crazy, but it's fun. So like right now, as an applied mathematician, so I can work in a lot of different fields. So like right now, what I'm doing presently is an interdisciplinary research okay. which comes across a lot of field. So now I'm interested in biomedical, like you are, you are doing. Yeah. I'm working on a cancer research. So, so developing models to better solve exactly like cancer-related problems. Okay, I I can understand that. My advisor. Like some days ago now, my advisor now is being called by some other professor in other university now in collaboration on how to develop model for COVID-19 and how to understand how it's been affecting tissues in the body. So she she um, she is in chemical engineering department, so I'm I'm working with with her in chemical. Ah, uh, okay. So because I'm an applied person, I can work with anybody I choose, not necessarily math department okay so all that i just need to do is just make use of some math to solve those problems mm -hmm. so it is not it is not the bonus now rest on me to understand the biology and yeah. everything that is outside of mathematics wow, so that like, would be challenging that is challenging yeah. I, I did some presentations some days ago and i was like I'm sorry, I'm just going to ignore all these biological tasks. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll leave you guys to read the PowerPoint and present in literal meaning what this is saying. Yeah. So, yeah that, okay, that is good. After the presentation, that I really did justice to it, that even though I ignore the biological name, I'm just like, uh, wait. <laughs> because it was, because some names, in biology, I'm messing with my math knowledge. Yeah. Not, I'm like, when I hear some name in biology, it, what comes to my mind is the math immediately. But it's a different thing in biology. So it's really conflicting. So, but when you write papers, you have to make sure you put in the biological times so that when. Because your, your collaborators will help out when it comes to writing. So that when, the, so that when people in biology read this, they will be able to understand what is going on. And when the person in mathematics read it, they will be able to understand also. And research is not limited to that. It cut across every field, depending on the interest yeah. of the student, once you are doing an applied math. And an advice that I will give for any student doing math is, if you don't want to be a professor in the four walls of the classroom, mm -hmm and you have a lot of challenges to face. You have to go out of your comfort zone. Cool. To go extra mind to learn some things different from what you are learning. Mathematics itself. Because once you are learning mathematics itself, the whole training is for you to become a professor 
that train other people also. But for applied mathematicians, you have to also you have a challenge. Maybe identify another field. Yes, another field that you interest that you want to apply all the methods and that you are learning in math that you want to put it into to use. Oh, that, that makes more sense to me now. <laughs> so you should not be surprised if tomorrow now I call you that can we collaborate? Can yeah. we talk about the technical experiment that you perform? What, yeah. happens the model? what are the challenges that you have? And let's see if we can build a better model to, to improve your analysis. Because some might be very expensive that you might not be able to carry out, but I can do that using some computer simulations and mathematical models make it less expensive for you to do. Interesting. So um, as a last word, what would you say to someone who is still thinking about maybe going for a PhD or master's in mathematics? Okay. Just briefly. <laughs> there are challenges, but you overcome. And you cannot do it alone. You have to collaborate at least. Most especially grad school, you cannot do it alone. You have to collaborate. Collaborate, reach out to people. You have to reach out. You have to be able to ask for it. Forget, oh, I finished first class. I'm the top of my class. Yeah. You just have to ask for help. Because it will be so overwhelming to you. So you just have to reach out and ask for it. That's Don't good. Like to ask for it. That's good. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Demitokwe uh, Benson. I'm going to include his, um, I don't know, uh, LinkedIn in the description below. So if you want to connect with um, Demitokwe, please do that and uh, ask questions about the mathematics field in general. So um, don't forget, guys, that um, you need to subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying any of our content. Like I always say, over 63% of people watching this channel are not subscribers. That's a little bit sad. So please uh, subscribe to the channel and also um, like our Facebook page and also our Instagram page. I usually give out a lot of uh, knowledge on those pages whenever I can't uh, you know, set up a camera for YouTube. So don't forget to follow those social media pages. Um, till next time. I am Baba Jide Ujo and I'll see you in the next video.